Welcome to the Regular Joe's Podcast. I'm Dave Pisani. I'm Barry Kay. I'm Todd Pleasant. Disclaimer, Barry Kay is recording from an airplane hangar. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's his panic room. We'll see yeah. how echoey this sounds. I, as I said last week, I was uh, out, not in my normal podcast studio. I am back in, but nothing else is, and it's very echoey in here, and it's the no longer carpeted floor. So I don't think you're going to notice there at home, listening audience, but if you do, we'll, we'll rectify it for we'll next week. We'll see. Well, I'm curious to hear the recording, but uh, just want in case you are hearing it and you are questioning the audio quality of our podcast, which I think we should win an Emmy for. Or uh, what are those? Prod- uh, yeah, do, do they, they give Emmys for podcasts? No, they give uh, what they're called something. Pod- thing cast awards, pod- potties. I don't know. The, yeah, the pot. No, there is something. There is, I, yeah. I want. We. But- I want a potty. That would be the best yeah, award ever. <laughs> exactly. We should get the audio quality award because ours is better than everybody's. It is. Although mine might not be this week, and I apologize. That's and why. Being I'm the sorry. audio guy, you know, it's. Bad on me. Uh, I'm not submitting now, this episode to the Academy. That's right. Up until now, it's been great. Yeah. yeah. But I'm happy so, because I'm in my back I'm back in my office and there's no more rolled up carpets. So This is good. We need one of those. Yes. Okay. This week uh we're gonna talk some fall T V or lack thereof. Uh Star Trek auction was the past Thursday. We'll talk about that. Uh the prop store prop prop store Star Trek auction. Speaking of that, I, the, we got to talk about the heritage auction at some point that you said. Yes, that uh, website is just the prop store is so much more. Oh, I know. User friendly. Their 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 website leaves a lot to be desired. Their website and their organization of stuff is just all over the place. Anyway, we'll talk about that down the road. If you're into the monsters, check out Her- heritage auctions. <laughs> Lily Munster's dress, yeah. There's a ton of Munster stuff. Yeah. I went through... There's like... Some guy has a Munster collection that is going up for auction. Didn't Azarian do... Wasn't he... Didn't he do a prop star auction? He did or a what, big what auction a while back, but he's, they, it was only a fraction of what he had, I think. So there's a lot more But now I think he's got stuff in this Heritage auction. Why would you move from prop store to Heritage? Um, I don't know. Maybe... Uh... I think it was prop store, wasn't it? Anyway. More on auction stuff later. Um, we're, I'm just putting it out here now. Check out our Instagram as you listen to this. Why are you laughing? Because I'm hesitating? <laughs> just because you, you seemed like you locked up there for a second. <laughs> I did. Um, we're going to put. We're gonna start putting photos of what we talk about from whether what's in the box or workbench uh, on Friday on our Instagram. Because we hardly use Instagram. Might as well try to use it. So anyway, we'll more, I'll remind you that later. I use Instagram Let's, every day, but we don't post a lot from the podcast. We post almost nothing. That's where all of our cosplay friends live. I do on not remember my Instagram password. So. I'm surprised you even have one. I do. <laughs> or you mean our Instagram password? Because we have a show Instagram. Oh, yeah, yes. I have a personal Todd, one. I don't I know if you... Don't, like I said, yeah. Look like at it. like I all my social media, it, it yeah, is. Well, well, so this is this is good for everybody. So I have a personal Instagram. Dave does not. He just has the podcast Instagram as his personal Instagram. But I don't. I don't. I rarely. Sometimes I'll put personal stuff on there if I need to. But well, what's, you what's funny stuff. is that I have access to the show Instagram too. And sometimes when I switch over to that feed, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. This is Dave's Dave's account. No, it's not really, but. You post stuff on your own feed that should be going on the show feed. I'll just put that okay. out there. I, okay, that's fair. So, not that it ma- not, matters. Yes. Hey, look, if you're following our show on Instagram, you should follow me too. <laughs> Please. Okay. And don't look for me. You won't find me. Okay. So. All right. Let's go random. Todd, what do you got? Okay. So, um... There's always articles. There's always things on Twitter that are very interesting, and or actually kind of Twitter. You read what's that? Twitter. No, you but read I'm saying Twitter. Twitter. Th- there's things that like 
I don't want to say clickbait, but people put out there just to get like mentions and stuff like that. And sometimes they get attention from from other people. So there was a uh, from one of the I think it's uh, comicbook.com printed out this blurb that said Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two script left Nebula's Karen Gillan and Mantis's climb uh, Palm climb and te- I don't know how to say her last name. I tried climb and te- in flood of tears. Okay. You mean Guardians, Guardians of the Galaxy? Of Galaxy. I've read that. Yeah. You said two. So, okay. um, James Gunn responded. <laughs> I hope it's not because they thought they had too few lines. Because honestly, their roles are both pretty huge, and it seems greedy. <laughs> <laughs> and then later, he followed up by saying, that "Or maybe they just got paper cuts." <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I read that they have big roles in this. Big That's roles, interesting. And apparently, they said that it, this is, they said this is going to be a, a heartbreaker. Uh, a number no, of sources have said that, dies. and that this, that we are going to see um, Rocket's backstory in its entirety, Ooh. and that's something that's never fully been covered in the comics or any other media. So that's maybe what the heartbreaker. I suspect. Gets put I suspect the, the it ringer. is. So. Well, as long as we know he winds up okay. Anyways, every everything. Well, Batista has said that that he believes this will be the final yeah. Guardians movie, and that's that's what a number of people are saying now. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Go out in a high note, do it right. I am I'm very much looking forward to this two years from now. And I don't know where I read it, and maybe it was wrong, or maybe I misread it. But I had originally thought that Batista was out as Drax, but I guess no, he's doing no, he's the third after, movie after yeah. this. But okay. I, I also think that because he was pretty vocal that he didn't think they did enough with his character and he didn't think that they did. I mean, I read an article where he said that his character in Dune was so much more developed than his character in Guardians of the Galaxy. And he thanked Guardians for letting him show that he can act, but or that he's not just a wrestler, you know, but um, I love Drax. I think Drax is a great character. And, you know, the other thing, too, was Drax was very much was a a reinterpretation of that character, but he didn't have significantly more or less to do than Drax had in the comics either. He was the same. He was the, like the muscle. It's, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty one dimensional character, and, but that one dimension they, is really good. But I'm good. saying James yeah. Gunn made more of him and, you know, gave it a spin and ma- made a niche for him that didn't exist in the other character. The other character was just this revenge driven muscular guy. And, and I, I think he did right by that character. So, um, yeah, he had really some of the funniest lines in the second film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love that character for sure. Barry, what do you got? So I just found this literally an hour ago, I guess. But uh, Disney announced that they're having something called Disney Plus Day on November twelfth. Um, that's, that's when they launched, like two years ago. I think it's the date that they launched two years ago, and so that's the date that Shang Chi show Shang Shang Chi shows up on Disney Plus. Oh, Jungle okay. Cruise shows up on Disney Plus. Oh, who cares? Uh, and well, I, I've heard it's fun, and, and I, you know, we were talking about Emily Blunt before we started. I always want, enjoy her movies. It's not thirty dollars fun. It's free fun. No, yes. I think that th- it's free fun no, on November. 12th. No, I know. I'm just saying yeah. I wouldn't pay the thirty dollars to watch it. But there's uh, something called Home Sweet Home Alone. I don't know what that is, but okay. Uh, <laughs> Disney Olaf Presents, which I think is a Frozen thing. Um, yeah, Olaf is a first. It's a Pixar thing. There's a new Simpsons short. Um, there's season two of Jeff Goldblum's The World According to Jeff Goldblum. And there are both a Star Wars and Marvel special look. And I'm putting those in air quotes. Um, and more, it says. Oh, that's cool. So, And that's I cool. also saw on Twitter tonight that they're, all the Twitter people are claiming that the Star Wars thing is a Boba Fett special. So, we'll Like see. a teaser kind of thing? Or... I think it's more, from what I saw on Twitter, it's more like the history, like the entire Boba Fett's history, probably helping lead up to... It's like a gallery kind of thing. It's probably leading up to the Book of Boba, you know, help people that don't know who Boba Fett is or don't understand that he died like a bitch in the Sarlacc pit. Exactly. Um, So yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's nice that they're trying to, you know, make a day and bring all of this new content out on one day. It's kind of cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. So that's, that's, I still got to try to go see Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, and, and yeah. while I'm on the topic of Star Wars, as we record this, tomorrow, Star Wars Visions debuts. 
<laughs> Are you watching it? You're going to watch the first one? No, because the season premiere, two hour season premiere of Survivors on tomorrow night. I'll be watching that. Oh, I was. I thought you were going to say that was two hours. The two hours. <laughs> season eighty seven. Season forty one. Survivor. And my son is doing like a a pool to see like who you know you got to pick. Your, out of we the, did that in the first season. Entire cast. That, you got to no. pick. Pick the three people that you think are going to do well, and then you got to pick the person you think is going to win. So we all did that. Tonight. We all put in like a hundred dollars one year to, and you pick from the beginning. That's I don't what this remember, was. Yeah. Maybe it was fifty bucks. I don't remember who. Won. I know I didn't win. Who did you? But, do you so remember yeah. who you had in the first season of Survivor? Mine wasn't. The, we I think we did the okay. second or third season because I think I only watched the first season. Um, and I think I was going with like Rudy, the Navy SEAL guy, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Forty one yeah. seasons. I, I have not I literally have not missed an episode. Wow. I've always liked it. I kinda got away from it after a while. What's cool why. about it now is that my all three of my kids are into it, my wife's into it, so it's it's something we can actually watch as a family, which there's nothing left that we can watch as And a do you comment about the women at at like day twenty when they start really looking good? Because they've lost enough weight <laughs> in front of everybody. Well, that, that's usually offset by them not shaving their armpits or legs. So, you know. <laughs> that's a joke, people. It's a male <laughs> joke. Male. Uh, uh, we're men in our know. 50s, in case anybody was wondering how old or young we were. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Anyway. Setting our um, ways. So, yeah. So, I had a, I was. I'm going to spoil this for you if it's a spoiler because I just read it. Um,. Sigourney Weaver's in Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yes. Yep. I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Thanks for spoiling it. Yeah, well, it's in the news, so it's not a spoiler. Um, I thought that was interesting. Good. Yeah, so she reprises her role. As yep. Dana Barrett, not just as yeah. a cameo. Not of as Zool. Yep. There is no Dana, just yep. only Zool. The bad news is she's, she's the withered, old, rough-voiced person who answers the phone at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought you were going to say she's the withered old Sigourney Weaver no. as she exists no. now. No. Always love Sigourney. We like Sigourney. Yes. She's a... Uh, and that was nice when I met her. Um, she's the original... Yeah, so that's, I, I, so I've, I've, every time it's been on lately, I've been catching Edge of Tomorrow. She's the original full metal bitch, Sigourney Weaver. Ripley. I would agree with that. Ripley yeah. is the full metal um, bitch. I'm excited about that. and I'm excited about James Bond, and I'm excited about that. I know there's other stuff coming, but... I, I'm uh, yeah I'm I'm hoping that they do right by the Ghostbusters franchise. Um, Me too. I have a lot of faith. I I do too. I got to say I I very much do. I think it's in the right hands. I think they're being very respectful of it while changing very much changing what it is. Um, yeah, I, I I think it's I and and I, honestly I don't think we know what it is. I think they're I think I don't think we do. I either think at they're all. framing. You know our perspective on it one way, and and I think it's. But yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other random? I got one thing. Uh, it's a, a quote from you and McGregor um, regarding Obi Wan. He said that we just finished shooting our series. It went really, really, really good, and is really fun. I enjoyed working with the director, executive producer Deborah Chow, and I think it will not disappoint. Um, so that's one person okay. who's, who's, you know, convinced it's going to go well. So hey, the fact that he's just happy to be doing Star Wars makes me happy. That, that I, means... and, you know, Barry, that's exactly kind of how I felt. It's like, he's been very mixed on this and it took him a while to get back. Really? I don't think he's been mixed. I think he, he has said he's been ready to do this for like six years. He has, but at the but time but, of the, when the prequels were in production and when they came yes. out, he was not super... He was not, and well, he it. has not been happy about the on again, off again thing. And there's going to be a movie. It's not going to be a movie. He's yeah. been very, he's been somewhat vocal about, yeah, I, you know, you might know more than I do kind of thing. Um, and he's also been pretty vocal in the past about too much green screen. It wasn't gr- a great experience yes, as an okay, actor. I'll give you that. So, yeah. yeah. But he, he, and he's right. he seems he's just, embracing this and excited about it. And, and it seems like it's been a good experience. So, um, you know who I embrace and am, and am excited about fanboy collectibles. <laughs> we embrace them at every uh, every chance we get. Um, here's something for each of you: Back to the Future Three, Doc and Marty. I know that's not your favorite um, 
Back to the Future movie, Barry, but those figures do look awesome. Those Hot figures Toys look incredible. Toys. Forget whether you like the movie or not, those figures are awesome. Yeah, they do look awesome. Uh, t- a 21-inch tall Catwoman premium format statue, which looks awesome. It does look quite awesome. Yeah. yeah that looks like leather, whatever, Mrs. Peel suit on her, yep. too. Um, Mando statue, Ahsoka statue, Pops, Hot Toys, Sideshow, Kotobukias, and Kotobukayas. Anything you guys need, check those guys out. Fanboy Collectibles are... Uh, they're going to be at New York Comic Con, I believe, aren't yes, they? Yes, they are. Okay. We're not going, but they're going to be there. So if you are going, check them out. Fanboy Collectibles uh, booth. Yeah, I saw that. Um, tell them, say hi. Let's go hi. Say hi to Troy. He's our buddy. He takes care of us, and he'll take care of you. Uh, and at their store in Newtown, Connecticut. Okie dokie. So the fall, we had a couple episodes, or when did we do that? Like a year ago when we talked about the fall TV guide, which was like sort of the highlight of nerds who sort of stayed in and didn't play sports. There's nothing like that anymore. It's just just a shadow of the fall TV season is a shadow of what it used to be back in the old days. And now it's a shadow of a shadow. Exactly. Um... But I actually I found I, you look at this every year. It's a it's a calendar. Who puts it? I mean, it's TV line a website puts it out. But it sort of shows everything that's coming out. And I thought we'd maybe talk about some stuff that we did want to watch, which there may not be much, and stuff that looks just ridiculous and stupid. Um, does anyone want to go first? You mean something that you're looking forward to? Or uh, any of that. L- looking at the calendar, is there anything? I mean, I could jump in and I'll tell sure. you how I'm thinking. It's so funny. There are things that I like. I'll see the preview, or you know, I see a lot of this stuff because I mean, you know, we sell sell TV, and so I see a lot more than you know, probably the average person. There's a lot of stuff that like I would watch that, but I'm just not gonna because I just don't want to <laughs> spend the time doing it. Well, and and because it looks like a great pilot, and then you know it's going to get canceled, and they'll, you'll never get the satisfaction yeah. of how does it end. Sorry. Like for example, um, see, NBC has a show that premiered last night, uh, Ordinary Joe. I think the concept is interesting, and I know very little about it. I guess they show a guy's life. If he made different th- different decisions at one point in his life, and he goes in three different directions, so they recap. I think that sounds interesting, and I, I feel like maybe I'll jump in and try It's a nineties Gwyneth Paltrow movie. But, it's got a little bit uh, of a quantum leap thing to it, also yeah. because every week he's in a different situation. Is that what it is? I don't really know. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not saying that it's that, but I'm just saying like you know, on Quantum Leap, every week he was in a different body, doing a different job, like. I think this guy, from what I saw from the previews, it looks like every week it's a, you know, if I had only been a lawyer, this is what my life would have been like. If I had been a doctor. Oh, really? Is that maybe? Then that's not as good. I don't know. But uh, sidebar, there, Scott Bakula talks, there's talk about a reboot of Quantum Leap. Really? Uh, a rumor about that. Interesting. That should be interesting. Um, anyway, maybe I'll check it out, but I, I don't. So I've got, a, I've got one that I saw the preview for, and... It is the type of show I would have started to watch, but I'm so burnt by this stuff. So I'm going to go with La Brea. Have you seen the preview for I that? agree with that. I, I, I am curious about La Brea as well. It, That's it totally, next week. Yeah, it comes on next week. It looks like it could be something, but... I mean, look at what just happened with... Um, what was the one that got canceled and then just got picked up by Netflix to finish it? Um, Manifest. Um, Manifest. Manifest. Like... I, I I stopped watching Manifest for the exact same reason because I'm like I don't want to get stuck watching this and then not have it actually end. Yeah, I watched an entire I, like I watched I'm an gonna... entire season of Flash Forward. And what was that? Yeah. I remember that. Yep, and that was it. That was all we got. Um, but I watched the entire season of what's the frequency. Even though it didn't wrap up, I was happy was, I watched. Yeah, they it. got to a good place. With I that. really yes. enjoyed it, and it was. It didn't leave me hanging. I even told in a meeting with the CW, I'm like, you should not cancel this show. And she's like, I agree, but sorry, we have to. Well, La Brea is on NBC starting on the 28th in case anybody wants to see it. Those are the two of the... Those are NBC ones. Those are two 
I would, I may, you know, I feel like to sit down for an hour and almost be like, okay, I don't need to watch it. I'd be a little satisfied or maybe it's good. I don't know. I, I don't feel like give stuff a yeah. chance. I will, this first couple of weeks, last couple of weeks have been crazy for me, but I'm actually eager to sit down and watch Why the Last Man, which is that was a, on my list. Is, is based on a comic, which I read years ago, which was really very was. good and very innovative at its time. It's going to be a, it's an interesting premise for now. I mean, basically, Brian I think on, it, right? I thought that looked interesting. I don't have Hulu. That's a, the only thing I don't kind have. Kind of mystery disease kills kills every man on the planet, um, which is an odd time. Is this like triple X rated at all? <laughs> <laughs> Ex- except this one dude and his monkey, um, who, who is also. I mean, so so no. But okay, seriously, let me ask like, you: Is this triple X rated? So like, you know. Human males, male animals, all day. But this guy and his monkey survive. And it is a question why. And That's not a euphemism. He's basically trying to find his way back to his girlfriend, despite the fact that every woman on the planet is throwing themselves at him. Um, or trying to kill him on general principles. So anyways, but it was it was yeah. good. It was extremely well written. It It's, you know, I'm sure it's it's held up reasonably well since then but I, i'm this is something they've talked about adapting for years in a bunch of different ways and it's brian k vaughn comic right yeah it was brian k vaughn comic yeah and i have a feeling that they're probably deviating quite a bit from the source material i don't know why i have nothing to base that on and i'm with you i'm gonna watch it and i do pay for hulu um don't know why, but I do pay for Hulu, so yeah, I have it. I've never well, you for Handmaidens. We had it for Handmaidens Tale, but yeah, you know, I've never had Hulu that's on for like eight game. weeks a year, yeah. and I pay for it. I, I, I again, like I said, I what I've seen though in the the extended previews, it is very similar to the. It, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes. But anyways, that let's is, let's do this. Let's it doesn't have to be these three, but why don't we each assign ourselves one of these shows, and we'll come back. We won't spend a lot of time. We'll. Give the we did that last year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so it, we may pick different ones, but it could be Todd Why the Last Man, Barry La Brea, and me, yep. Ordinary Joe. Yep. Um, and that's and I don't you, know if you your guys things, give a the shit things about you mentioned Ordinary so far are all have all started or about to. Um, Ordinary Joe started last night. La Brea's next. La Brea starts next Tuesday. Okay. Maybe we'll come up yeah. with other. So things. my next thing, and we've talked about this before, is Foundation, which. I, oh yeah, yeah. That know. we've talked about. That we're all going to um, watch. Yeah. I think, right? Yeah. I, I it was. I'm going to at least start it. Well, at least start. I it. hope it's not. I feel like it could be like one of these things, like super complicated and like what? He, I'm hoping it's thing. not. I feel like it's going to be principal criticism of the source material. It is super complicated and super talky. Okay. So, oh but I'm saying, but they've known that for 60 years. Okay. So. You don't have sixty years to think about this. I, I'm hoping and make it super the, complicated. It's a no-win complicated. situation because it's it's such revered material that if you change it too much, you're gonna have all the haters here, saying here's that they the, shouldn't have changed yeah, it. But here's my take on it: is transferring it to a visual medium. I think you can eliminate a ton of narrative. So. Yeah. I, I just hope. hope it doesn't take itself too all uber serious yeah. and get, get I mean, some good people not, not in it that, and attached to it. We'll see. Yeah. And it's interesting. So Friday nights, that that comes out this Friday night. Apple's going to be dropping Ted Lasso, Foundation, and The Morning Show all on Fridays. That's I don't know that they've had three shows. But only for a few of, weeks because Ted Lasso is almost done. Right, yep. Yeah, but I'm just saying the it's morning, interesting. And Morning Show they, just started up again last week, right? So Morning yeah. just Show just started. I watched the first episode, yeah. Um, all right, what else? I doubt I'll watch it, but they're doing a reboot of the Wonder Years with a, a black family in the South in the 60s. That's interesting. And Fred Savage is attached yep. to it. I don't think I'll, I'll watch it, but that's an interesting idea. There's I one like, that... Oh, go ahead, Dave. Finish up. No, go ahead. I think I'm going to say what you were going to say. No, totally going to say something different. Okay. So I was going to say, I think that's like, let's just remake so-and-so. I feel like there's a little more put into this a little more thought and instead of like, let's just take so-and-so and do this, you yeah. know, I don't know. Yeah. I hope From so. what I've been reading about it over the past couple of months. I hope it is because I hope it's, it's not just, let's just take this idea and just change, you know, the race of the, you know, 
yeah. family, and and that's I that's feel like it's twist. like this like, kid needs to be more to it. Than I, I think this it's kid's the premise challenges are different than that. Kid's Absolutely, challenges and are... I think that's one of the things that I think this they're, they're we're in a different time now. You need to tell stories a different way, and I think I think having Fred Savage attached to it. You bring a consciousness of this was what we were able to tell in the 70s. This is now what we're able to tell about the 1960s with the knowledge that there's no way you could have, you know, when the Wonder Years aired, do a truthful telling of what the 1960s would have been like for this this black family. So um, mm, mm. I, I, I think it'd be interesting. And I also think that they're using the Wonder Years hook as a, you know, because you know going what the premise is going in. So yeah. it's, it's like a built-in compare and contrast thing. I think it could be interesting. Could be. I, I a, do think this is a, one of the one of the things that I think is is probably going to get a lot of attention. Yeah, and they're putting it in a good slot too, right after the Goldbergs, um, which is good. Yeah, the Goldberg season premiere is this week as well. Tomorrow night, as we record yeah, this. Yeah, uh, so. tomorrow. Yeah. So, so is the Mask Singer. <sighs> yeah. God. And now, did you see How they've got a new version of that six. where it's not masks, but they're, the, the singers are actually backstage on a green screen and their avatars are what performs for the judges. Oh, my God. I was like, really? I, I, I've <laughs> never seen a second of any singing or dancing show, and I will hopefully never have to. Well, I've, I've seen enough American Idol and, you know, Ugh. fine, whatever, but... Yeah, my wife will occasionally watch the dancing shows. So last last night was the season premiere of Dancing with the Stars, season a million. Yeah, we know some people who are on. Well, it, so right, so I, I was sitting there with my wife just because she didn't even know who the people were, and she always bases whether she watches it or not on whether she likes any of the people in the cast. So I watched the first ten minutes with her as they announced the quote unquote celebrities. Um, Boy, they really stretch these days. Like, social media influencers are considered these celebrities oh, now. Yeah. But yeah, our buddy Martin Cove is on there this season. I can't, as scared of him as we were when we talked to him, it makes me shocked that he would do Dancing with the Stars. I know, but he's. Yeah. I think he will do anything to promote see, the next season of Cobra Kai. So. Yeah. And he's a good guy. So the, he's a, good he's guy. a great guy. Yeah. Love that yeah, guy. Good for him. So the one that I was going to pick, and, and again, this you'll never watch this, but there's a show coming on the CW called Legends of the Hidden Temple that is a reboot of a game show that my kids used to watch on Nickelodeon. Um, and I think they would like it if it's done well, if especially if it's updated. Um, but it was kind of like loosely Indiana Jones-y kind of thing where there was this... Temp- it's still a game show? I think it's still a game show. I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, so you know, if it's done even remotely well, like like Nancy True, the floor is lava. Was fun. If this is fun, then it might be something I can watch with my kids. So looking forward to to seeing what that's all about. So Dave, Nancy Drew is coming back. You said third. I I saw that. Yeah, what's that? October eighth. October eighth. Um, uh, one of my. One of one of the film the shows that I still watch and enjoy, along with like seven other people, is Legends of Tomorrow. So season seven starts on the thirteenth. Season six ended two weeks ago. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> because Literally, it was a big break, right? Season six ended two weeks ago, the Sunday before last. And and season seven starts on the on the thirteenth. They they had a big They're gap really, in the season. They did right? have a they big gap. Really they did have yeah. a big gap. But I have never seen anything <laughs> even on, on on the CW where, where like I said there was a two week gap between two seasons. So, yeah, that's a little crazy. But it was uh, a cliffhanger. So you know. We'll see. Well, that's good. You don't have to wait too long. That's kind of what I was like. I was like, oh, yeah. wow. It's nice. gonna, I'm going to wait till spring to see what happens. And then I read I read your grid, and I was like, oh, or till next week, you know, the week <laughs> after next. So, yeah. Dave, what did you think of this past week's episode of Ted Lasso? Because it was definitely different. Yeah, I didn't love it. And, I, you know, I, I did read, if that's correct, somebody said that, they wanted a longer season, so they went back and filmed, did that episode, and they did the Christmas episode. I, I read that as well, yeah. As filler, 
sort of to extend bulk the up the season, yeah. but also didn't really affect the the uh, the storyline. Yeah. I mean, it you know it it reminded me of um, what's that movie? After Hours. That I think it was Martin, meant to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was okay. I yeah, mean, it was different. It was different. I don't love that guy's character. I, I like um, that you don't know anything about him, and now you know a yeah. little bit more about him. But I, I, I'm so glad that I uh, it's that funny. Show. I watched some of the Emmys. Um, the supporting actor, all four guys. So the beard guy, uh, Roy Kent, Wiggins or Higgins, and then the other, the the water boy, who's now the assistant coach, whatever right. his name is, all got nominated for best supporting actor, and. Um, and the, the uh, owner of the team got nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and she won. She won, and Brett, what's his name? Something Goldstein. Um, Roy Kent won, yeah. who's awesome. He he was on Fallon or somebody, and he's not that guy at all, which is funny. <laughs> and and he's a right. He was a writer on the. He's an actor, but he was hired as a writer on this show, and then um, said, "Look, th- I'm gonna." He actually made a tape of himself doing scenes of Roy Kent. To try to get the producers to see if they would consider him for the role, and they did. I can't imagine so, anybody else in that role. He's so he's good. the best. I want a Roy Kent jersey because he's so awesome. <laughs> Todd, you still haven't watched this. Right? I still have not watched it. You oh, haven't watched Ted Lasso. I mean, so I don't good. think it's as great as everyone thinks it is, but it's super enjoyable. And, I think it's you know, one of the best written things on TV right now. It's so yeah. well written. I have heard that from many people, and I, I just, I'm. Again, I, I hit it's this threshold on this show it's, for people telling me I have to be watching it, and and oh boy, that, that'll turn you off then. It does, and I'll, I'll probably watch it this this winter well, sometime. But, but well, that's what we do, though. We are always the ones telling other people. What oh, to watch. I know that. Watch that's it just saying, for Roy it's, Kent. It's like, it, no, this is not you guys telling me. This is normals telling me. Okay. And and well, it's not. There's people telling you to watch, uh, you know, that uh, bleeding heart. What's that crappy show? Uh, this is us. You know that women like. This is us. That's not this at all. No. Roy Kent curses drastically in front of his little niece constantly, and that's the best thing. To, ever. to the point where the little niece gets in trouble at school <laughs> because she's cursing at school, and he's cursing in front of the teacher. So oh, that's the best. So good. He's the best. Um. What were we talking about? That we're talking about we're there's on. not a lot of other shows coming yeah. on that we should care I'm about. I'm just going to go with, with on this list, even though there's some movies. Um, th- on October 1st, The Many Saints of Newark is a prequel to The Sopranos. I've never seen The Sopranos. What? Um, I think it's, dis- it's, it's disparaging to Italians. Um, though you've never seen it. No, I, I'm kidding. I just never got around to it. Uh, because you want to know why for the same reason. You have to watch you know the what? best show on TV. You have to watch I never they, watched it. In its entirety, oh. Oh. it is not as good not as good as its best moments. So it's oh, it's one I of those would things. agree with that one hundred percent. It's it's very You you'll disagree? I know I agree one hundred percent. Wait, 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 wait say that again? The show is amazing. At its worst, you're like, Well, that's an hour I'll never get back again. And there's oh, a lot of those. So it's hours. not like a Breaking Bad. Yeah. It's not like a Breaking Bad where every hour is. It's not just like Breaking Bad a gift. or The Wire where you go back through, and even the the weaker stuff is still worth watching. This some of the weak stuff was just like that was just wheel spinning. But, but in aggregate, it's it's worth watching. I would say I'm watch this I don't and think then I would ever that watch decision. that series start to finish again. I think I would watch the high points. I think. Pine Barrens is brilliant. I think there's like different episodes like that that are just like super, super standout. But there's a lot of like just really slow build up. And it's not mm. something I feel like I ever need to watch again. Just, That's what I'm saying. I'll be honest. Yeah, like, exactly. I feel that way about Game of Thrones too. I, I don't feel yeah. like I ever need yeah. to go back and rewatch Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. While good, and I, I feel I would describe it better than how you're describing that. It's all good, but it's it's a lot to get through. And the the difference between the two, Dave, is is Game of Thrones built and built and built and built and took you to the edge of the cliff and it then pitched off you cliff. off it. Okay, whereas this was like up and down and up, up and, and down, down and yeah. up and down and kept th- teasing the greatness that it once had, getting close but never quite getting there. Well, that dude wasn't that dude who wrote it uh, like just all over the place, and he had all kinds of issues. David, and stuff? Ch- there's a, the 
I've, I've referenced this book before, but the book Difficult Men is about a sh- ma- the showrunners of a bunch of different series. And the, the story with David Chase is, is just fantastic. He thinks he's going to trick HBO into making a movie. So he pitches his movie to HBO. HBO says, no, we do TV shows. So we'll take this as a TV series. We'll do a season of it. He goes in. He gets halfway through filming the first season and says, it's not going well. If you can just give me another $150,000, I can wrap this up tightly. We can make it a theatrical release and release this film. And they said, no, we're releasing it as a TV series. And he had signed a contract fully believing that he could turn them around and, you know, was by all accounts a miserable person to work with throughout the whole series. And, and, um, it wasn't what he wanted. It never was. There's a lot of people who think the the end of the series was a, a big middle finger to the fans. But um, it's just a, a, like a, a very different kind of thing. But as a result, the tension between that thing, that, and James Gandolfini's just blatant, incredible self-destructive tendencies, you know, produce something in it at its best that's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. It changed, hmm. changed TV. It absolutely changed how we look at TV. Now, all of that said, and I don't always go by reviews, the early reviews on that movie are not good. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'd watch it just to yeah. get a taste of it, yeah. so that's fine. They, they, they're what they're hanging a lot watching? on a very raw new actor So because of his connection, yeah. his family. Well, and quite connection. honestly, for a show that most people have kind of forgotten about. I mean, yeah. it's not like it's... You know, it just wrapped up a season ago, and now the movie's coming out. Like they probably should have or could have done that show. What? In, how many years ago did that show? Yeah, I go I off think the air? that I think that show is a watermark, high water watermark show, however you want to put it. Landmark. I I think it's the kind of thing that there's going to be interest in that. They they could squeeze interest in that for even another decade, maybe. But maybe. But my point being, if you if you're you kind of have to do a refresher to even remind yourself what it was all. And that's where I mean, I everybody think, remembers the ending, but I don't I remember think, most of what happened in between the big premiere I think and the a ending. Prequel, I think a prequel is, is, you know, makes sense in that regard because you don't have to remember everything to see what comes before. Um, but it went off the air in 2007. Yeah. It's been, it's been, a, been a long, long time. time since then. Yeah. And, um, Okay. Moving on from Sopranos, any who else has got something on this list that good, bad, or indifferent? Uh, I will try Invasion. Uh, What's that? Also on um, on um, Apple. When does that premiere? The twenty second. Oh, I see it. Yep. Twenty second. Yep. I don't know anything about that. They there there hasn't been a ton on it. It is it's an alien invasion thing. So oh yeah. You know, you I'm like really those? hoping it's not Falling Skies. Um, oh, God. Yeah. That was like... It, it was a slog. That was tough. I was like, oh, my God, this is great. Oh, wait a second. Is this, am I watching this whole thing? Wait a second. Wait, what wait, are you wait, doing? It's... it's uh, Yeah. Let's talk some more. Yeah. It's, well, uh, that's the same day that Dune premieres on HBO Max, which is weird because Dune is now... Out in many many countries all over the world, but it's not coming out here till November twenty or October twenty second. That's interesting. Long ways away. Hmm. I mean, it's a month from now. So yeah. all the reviews are out. All the YouTube, all the spec, every everything is already in full swing. I'm not paying attention to any of it, but it makes it hard to ignore when you've got over a month to to avoid that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Billions comes back. Which have you guys? Anyone watch nope. Billions? I enjoy Billions. I've Every seen the first episode, and I've been told by so many people it's good, and I just yep, haven't. Same had thing. Time. You got to watch it. I enjoy it a lot. Yep. Um, I heard there's a lot of Rush references in that show. So, to what? A lot of Rush references in that show. For what I hear, the band. I Rush. Don't remember, it's been such a long time since yeah. it's been on. They literally stopped it in the middle of season five. In in the beginning of COVID, and we've been, it's two years since we yeah. uh, had anything back. Um, Chucky. Yeah, yeah. 
Chucky's got a series. So that that is like the Chucky doll show, right? I've never seen any of those movies. Oh, I I had seen the original one or two back when they originally came out. Yeah, that's a Chucky series. There's not a lot else on here. Barry, is this where you tell us it's better than we think? (laughs) No. What I will say, what I will say, is that there was a period of time in the '80s and early '90s where I used to enjoy horror movies a lot more than I do now. So, you know, I would go see the new Freddy Krueger movie when it came out, or I'd go see the new Chuck. I just, I've kind of dropped off of all that, but. Oh, you know what? I saw a preview, I guess, during the Emmys. The, the, and I, again, this is not even... I liked seeing the trailer. A, it's a comedy called Ghosts, where I guess this woman moves into a house and there's a ton of ghosts in it. And it's all, there's like a a Cub Scout with an arrow through his head. <laughs> and there's... What was... Um, oh, what the hell? Oh, there's a dude dressed up like, you know, uh, Colonial Times or whatever. And he's like, you look like you're dressed in Hamilton. He's like, you know Hamilton? Alexander Hamilton? I was just talking to him. And like, you know, I don't know if it's funny. And there's all kinds of these crazy ghosts. If it's a half hour comedy, I could devote 22 minutes to it to see. But it's, you know... It's like Ghost and Mrs. Muir on steroids, yeah. I think, or something. Yeah. That, that's, so that could I, be I, interesting. When is that? It could be. That is October 7th on CBS. It's okay. a comedy. And again, the, the trailer looked like there were some funny things. I'll check there. that I one out. It could be fall flat after that. So I, I just rem- remembered something that, I, that happened at dinner tonight that I did say I would say on the podcast. So we were talking about movies, as we often do. All five of us were sitting there. And... Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came up, and I said, and I, I said I would admit this on the podcast because one of my kids said you got to you got to say that. I said it's not a good movie, it's not a terrible movie. And then Joshua looked at me and said, "Are you Crystal Skulling about Crystal Skull, Dad?" <laughs> you are. That's he knows. Yeah, yeah. Crystal so. Skull about Crystal Skull. It came up, came up. Barry, as it often does. We're your friends. You know we're, we're with you. It's a terrible movie. You've just got you've got to accept it, and you've got to move on. That's all. You have to. You, we got you to oh cross the line for, with the Last Jedi. We did. Oh, I'm there for some. We did for some reason. You're holding back. It's just. It's, I left that out of random topics. But did you guys see the article this week with Marsha, Marsha Lucas's yes. comments on? Yeah. I di- I didn't go there for random topics, but I did. I. I saw an article that was like a clickbait thing. Um, oh no, she's she's uh, it's in a new Rinsler book, um, or it's she goes to town and she she's got an issue with Lucasfilm. She was supposed to do a signing for somebody and then pulled out she of it does, does for something. Not like the uh, what do you like? You didn't get the part of the four billion dollars or. You got a problem? Too bad. I just, I, I don't, it doesn't sound like she's down on the concept of Star Wars. It sounds like she thinks J.J. and Kathleen Kennedy don't know what they're doing when it comes to Star Wars. And half, That's half true, and you're irrelevant. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I think more than half true, but it's, yeah, so. You know what's not on this list that I just saw a preview for, and I kind of dreaded seeing it um, <laughs> on Netflix, Another Life with uh, Katie Sackoff. I watched the whole first season. I didn't love it. And I'm like, okay. But now it's coming back for a second season and left like on a cliffhanger. I'm like, do I have to watch that now? What, what, to see what if is it, that? They wrap it what up. What happens in that? I didn't realize Another that Another life a is, is um, they're on a, a mission to go to another planet oh, Jesus, that or got something. picked up. I thought that was like, yeah. I thought that got slammed. I have no idea. And it just, it went off, it crept off to die. It's back for another season. So I guess there's I don't even remember some message came from some alien race that they were coming and they had yes, to go meet I think and I see saw what happened three quarters of the first episode I watched all of them it must have been a very slow couple of months um, so that's coming back on October 14th and are you gonna watch it I don't know maybe I'll watch the first one and see I'm really watching I mean. I'm watching Ted Lasso. I'm watching Morning Show. I'm watching a couple things. I'm not watching a lot, so I don't know. So <laughs> let me can... ask you this: You probably got a lot of. You've at least got a season of Flash sitting on your DVR right now, right? 
No? I just <laughs> saw Flash Comes Back on 11-16. I, I thought that was canceled, and I don't think I could ever go okay. back. I, like I said, I've seen... I saw all Legends of Tomorrow, which is a short season anyways. <sighs> Do I, I... I will finish Supergirl, because... Oh. I know, but it's Supergirl it's, was it's, yeah, so it's the last year, last of the series, so I got to finish that. Uh, but then you the, you almost have an out because like it's not like you have to well, no, be oh, ready no, for got, maybe you know, comes back and everything. it's good. I it was so awful. I did and on, I, on the whole. I'm not finished with it yet. I got a few more episodes, but I did like Superman and Lois. I did too. I enjoy. I, I like that, and I'll watch the next. Yep. season. It pains me to think that you're not watching Ted Lasso because you need the time to watch Supergirl. <laughs> He's also watching. Star I made Girl. a commitment. No, I haven't watched the second season. I did finish the first season, so that's all on my DVR. I gotta can't. I it's, gotta. It's. Um, get I finally deleted Flash off my DVR. I mean, I never. I, I know I'm never going to go back to it. I can't go. I don't think I can go back. It was so painful, and that's a sad. That's kind of sad, but. How many seasons did I see it in, in my queue there and just dread having to watch yeah, it? Yeah, and that's I'm not just it. Doing so that to I, I think, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to decide. It may be, it may be like a boring winter or something like that, and you know, I'll, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll start um, painting models like Barry, and I'll need something to you know, just like <laughs> watch in the background. I don't know. That's not true. I, I'm I, trying to look through all this. There's sort of the mid-season stuff on this list. I don't see um, Dexter much. New Blood. I'm looking forward to. Oh yeah, we talked about yep. Dexter. And, um, and 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch Todd's show again. He took took me forever for him to get me to watch it, but I did finally watch Evil. I'm finished season one. I'm halfway through season two, and that show is actually excellent. I know it's the the finale is airing. I think in a couple weeks. Yeah, I haven't seen yeah, I haven't Paramount seen this Plus. week's yet, um, but. It's it's switched fully to Paramount Plus for season two or for three. For season two. two, and they, this was a show that should not have been on CBS, and, but I didn't realize how much it shouldn't have been, and it just it needed room to breathe in a way that, like I said, just it's once it, but it found its home on Paramount Plus. It's exactly what they should have done with the show, and it's it's like I said, it's even better than it was. And and um, and I really liked it the first season around. Barry, did you get to the monastery episode yet? No, no, I'm, I'm a few behind. <laughs> so the monastery, they go to monastery. He's going to ruin it for you no, anyway. No, no, they go to monastery where they can't speak because everyone's taking a vow of silence. And so they're there I think you told us about that. investigating. And so almost the whole thing is like their inner narratives. They have the things. They're, they're like they're, what their thoughts are. And it's uh, it's great. It's 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 really good. So and let's just say many of their thoughts would not have made it on on um, on regular TV. So oh, that's funny. So, yeah. Um, there's another movie coming out on Paramount Plus that I thought was like a sci-fi thing. And I don't remember what it is. It's not on this list. Um, did anyone? Oh, Todd, did you see this week's Titans? Yes. Yeah, I'm up to date. What's up with the freaking top, full frontal topless yeah. t- stuff? That was a little shocking. Yeah, I'm, I'm a few episodes behind still. I, I think I texted you. I just watched the episode where they did Robin's backstory for this yeah, season. It's not a kid's show. It's not no. a kid's show. And i got to tell you, uh, there's some, some odd choices here. <laughs> was it full frontal on Dove by any there, chance? There's some, there's some no. you know, mm-hmm. let's just say... Heroes don't always make the best decisions, and it's yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. I mean, it, there's better episodes than others, but it, it's. Uh, been, I think it's on the whole, I season. think I think it's been great, yeah. and I I yeah. love it, and I love that it's it's messy. It's and it's definitely messy. Yeah. So yeah. Um, um, well, Todd, you mentioned uh, there's a movie that's on Apple, Apple Plus, Finch. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that we all watched the trailer for. I had seen that uh, an article on it. It looks interesting. Yeah, it's it's got a kind of a almost a cast, last man on earth castaway, last man on earth, Martian kind of like. I mean, well, I, and we had one of those already this year, and it was extremely disappointing. Right, that's the, what I'm saying. The George I Clooney mean, thing. I'm so. almost tempted to call it the Earthling because it's like you know, single a guy alone trying to survive and. And um, he he finds a dog that he names Wilson. No, he doesn't. 
But um, <laughs> that would be he does find a dog. awesome <laughs> if he named the dog Wilson. <laughs> he should name it Wilson. <laughs> so, but again, it's. Uh, I'll watch oh it. Oh my god! If I, would watch, not I would watch. I would watch. I'll. Tom Hanks paid a fence. Okay, I mean, yeah. it's it, you know, you know, it's going to be a brilliant characterization. It's just, it's what they do with the story. Um, I just know it's going to be a tearjerker. I just, I just can't. As long as the dog lives, I'm as happy. As long as the I dog lives, and, and, dog and uh, the, the robot angle is interesting too. So, um, it's definitely like a boy and his dog meets Last Man on Earth meets. What was yeah. that? Chappie was, or I don't was, know. Yeah, I was just going to say, what was that movie with Hugh Jackman and the robot? <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> I actually like that I movie. I love the trying, really? to, yeah. trying to teach the, the robot to drive. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Steel is watchable, totally. Isn't you got your girlfriend in it? It or does one have of one, of, one of my many girlfriends in it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so there's some stuff to probably, watch coming up. It's good. There's some stuff to try. So... Let's. I guess the choices are we're all going to go with those choices. So why La Brea, Ordinary Joe? Yes. Now are Maybe all three we'll of us out. watching all three, or are we each watching our own? I could go with either way. We're gonna. It's gonna have to take a couple weeks anyway. Yep. Yeah. Or we each. Or I we go each with, go with two, and we say why. So. Yeah. We did that before. Wait, two. We, we picked two of the three. We're gonna we watch why? two of the three, and then we explain why. Um, so explain why the last man, <laughs> why would we explain no. why is on first base? <laughs> no. Home plate. That's right. Um, and I think I def- it's, it's not for a while, but I definitely will check out that ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let us know if you look at this, you say we have nothing to talk about. We're at 53 minutes already. Yeah, well, five we weren't supposed to tell them we, we had nothing to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah five minutes know. was before we started recording, if you remember. Okay, it took forever to get okay. the show going. So let us know if there's stuff that we didn't mention that you're going to watch or something you're interested in, or if you watch if you watch all CBS, the, the now three FBI shows and the seventeen NCIS shows. Do you watch those, anybody? Because that they they've got these franchises. Not to mention the law or, the fifty four law, law and order shows. Wait, what's the? Oh, there's NCIS Hawaii. There's NCIS. There's NCIS New Orleans or something. Like, come on. I'm sorry. I I saw, there's a Vegas worse, one too. It cannot there? be worse than Flash. It can't. It just. Can't. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, it's good. I've never seen more any procedural, shows. less costumes. Yeah. Uh, and if you're anyway, watching Survivor, watch. tech, you know, let us know. Um, I can't be the only one. It's 41 years, 41 seasons in. I can't be the only one. <laughs> Dead okay. silence from the other two hosts. I like. I just can't go back. Yeah. I just. It's never yeah. too late to jump in. Jeff Probst is still there. Still says the same I like things. Jeff Probst too. Yeah. He's got the best job in the world. I know. He's he totally a fortune, does. I'm sure. Um. Let's going to talk briefly about the Star Trek auction. So Star Trek auction was last Thursday, they from Discovery and in typical and I know we've talked about it auction auction prices are through the roof. There's Discovery stuff that went for really way more than even original series stuff that came up in, in the last auction, whatever yes. that was. Yeah, yeah, just nuts. Um, yeah, and some of it was really cool, legitimate stuff that I'd be like very, very proud and happy to own. And some of it, I'm, I was oh, scratching yeah. my head, like, who the hell would I, even want I, that? I will say, I don't know whether it's the exclusivity of it versus the you know stuff that there was much of, but anything attached to the characters from Strange New Worlds went insane. Yeah, went absolutely. I insane. would say that's. And so I don't know whether it's the attachment accurate. to the characters, the fact that there's less of that, but. That stuff was crazy. I think that people are really excited about that show. But, you know, there were a lot of uniforms. There were a lot of, a fair amount of phasers, hero and sort of rubber stunt phasers. And there were a lot of badges, the metal badges. And there were a lot of triples. Some of the badges, I mean, badges went from like $3,000 to like $8,000. The last time original series emblems went up for auction, at least to my knowledge, was like three years ago, um, they were selling three, you know, right, operations, yep. command, and engineering, or whatever, sciences. They went for $5,500. Here is metal badges from Star, 
from Discovery going for more than that. Three years for ago. something that you could basically from yeah, three it's crazy. Years ago. Yep. Yeah. No, it is crazy. And didn't didn't um, Captain Pike's badge go for like seventeen thousand or some crazy number? Was it that much? I, I know his. Uh, I'm just looking through some of the stuff. I think it, I think that might have been the number for that yeah, badge. Here, it was crazy. There's a category for badges. Um, like Spock ears, there were a pair of Spock ears from the Star Trek Into Darkness. They went only went for nine thousand dollars. Not that that's cheap, but Spock ears from the original series in the last auction went for less than yes. that. I'm pretty yep. sure. Um, I'm looking at all the badges. Oh, one went for sixteen hundred. Like not even assigned to anybody. Oh yeah, Pike's badge went for fourteen thousand dollars. That's okay. freaking crazy. Oh, sorry. That one. That's true. Pike's badge went for fourteen thousand. Hero captain badge not assigned to a person, so it could be Saru, right, yeah. it could be, or could be, uh, could be one of the captains of one of the ships that got blown up in the first episode. That went for seventeen thousand. I knew one of them went for that much. Yeah, that's crazy. And then the, the eighty-five hundred uh, Burnham's commander badge. So stuff was going nuts. Um, oh, and and we bought something. We'll talk about we it. We bought in a the seventeen thousand dollars badge. <laughs> yeah. How are we going to look at it three ways? You tell me about the plan, badge. But up three I ways. have not heard anything about this yet. You get the pips. Oh, okay. to, Barry the gets magnet. the back, and yeah. I get the front. Okay, well that's fair. That's fair. That's I almost like the things. last. Uh, I get four things, and you only each only get one. So that's good. Yeah. So hero phaser. Oh, we'll talk about. It. I'm sorry. You want to talk about triples? Go ahead, Barry. I'm sorry. No, no, oh, I was just, I wasn't even going to say what it was. I was just saying we did buy oh. something, and that we'll talk about it in a future episode. But you, you just said triples, so yeah, we bought more triples. We'll talk about them in a future episode when we have them. We in will. Our okay, we'll talk about a few. We'll do. Uh, we'll show them because they're showing up Thursday. Yeah, they'll be here soon. So, Hero Phaser went for one of them. Went for twenty one thousand dollars. There is years ago, original Wang Chung or whoever yeah. that dude made the went for less than that. A re, original TOS phaser went for sold for less than that. It's crazy. Yeah, and then but, the but rubbers, you know what it is, Dave? I, I, I in my mind anyway. Yes, it's true that 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 that's what it sold for years ago. But if you put a real original series phaser up now, it would go for a oh, hundred thousand dollars. So absolutely. the fact that these went for twenty thousand. Everything you've got to keep it in perspective of where this industry or hobby is right now. It's I mean, insane. It's red hot. It, it's insane. And and again, I think we're we're seeing like the the after effect of cabin fever here, where I think a lot of these people haven't been to shows. A lot of these people haven't done a lot of things that they've normally done in the past year, and they are itching to pull a trigger. And, and there's a lot of new people that this is their entry into right. it. And yeah. And then there's people like us who have sort of decided that all we're going to own is original Tribbles from different all the different shows that Tribbles were featured in. So. That's right. That's right. And we're halfway there. I have the feeling the original series, series one is going to be the tricky one. But mm. so, what would those things go for? Crazy. How would you even validate that they're real at this the, point? And here's well, but the here's the other thing is is have to smell I, I have read that a lot of those were destroyed and a lot of them were just like randomly handed out as like you know here take this take this. But there's no way to authenticate that. So, yeah, um, and yeah, it wasn't David Gerald making his own and selling them. I mean, yeah. it's, it would be so hard to validate them. I would, them. I would buy a David Gerald tribute, uh, um, triple just for. Was he selling them at that? He was thing? he was not? But if he did, I would totally buy that. We didn't, bought his script. Didn't Bo Trimble tell us that he was yeah. that he made his own? I think so. I thought, yeah. So yeah, it was crazy. Auction stuff's crazy. I, and isn't are they having a another Hollywood memorabilia auction soon? Or seems like there's, there's the heritage one, on. one that we mentioned before is coming up in November, and they're going to have Kirk's phaser rifle. Yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, that's um, that's nuts that that's going to be in there. That's. You know, I say yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. like a dream prop for me, but I love the look of it. And but but it's also it's it's not used very often. So well, it's just used there, and and then in a bunch of publicity stills. There's yeah. also a lot of people insist that that does still doesn't doesn't still exist. So that's I'd re- it's in the Azarian. Yeah, so yeah, I'd, 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 I'd love to I'd love to know the 
the you know the um the lineage to it the yeah exactly the oh, provenance the provenance the provenance, the, the uh, path of custody um cuz that would be interesting but he did buy up a ton of that original Star Trek stuff. Oh, he stuff did. Early and, on, no, and that's yeah. why, like I said, if anybody else had it, I would be a lot more dubious of it. But um, even if this thing had, if it showed a significant, significant repairs, I'd be less dubious of it. But, mm. but, um, uh, yeah. So we'll see. So yeah, auctions are crazy. If anyone got anything, let us know. Um, you know, uh, I saw people online prop store. A lot of people were like, if you bought triples, you're selling one, I'll buy one. I'm like, you could have bought a lot of 10 and probably made more money on them. Yeah, well, that was the thing. I mean, there, there were a lot of, there were many lots of triples in this auction, and most of them had multiples, right? They all had at least six. Or... Really should have bought them and we could have sold them, but. Eh, could have. Tr- could have. I actually, I did buy two lots of 10, so if anyone wants them, they're $300 <laughs> a piece. Contact us at regularjoes.com. We don't. No, we got our triples. Any. That's all that matters. Yep. It, ignore where it says Hallmark. That's <laughs> not what it is. Yep. You know, Dave. Dave is pretty good with a sewing machine. He could probably whip up a batch of tribbles and you know. Well, if at three hundred dollars a piece, I'll whip up a batch. Um, all right. Let's. I think we're gonna do wrap this thing up. We're gonna do Joe's choice. Uh, we each have like a segment, whether it's a what's in the box or a workshop or something. Or we're gonna do that. So. Joe's choice, Barry. What are you choosing? What do you got? I've I'm, I'm I've got a, a a series of things I'm going to show you. They're all small, but this all stems back to I have been changing guitar strings for forty plus years. I've been playing guitar that long, so obviously you need to learn how to change strings. And I've learned how to do it, and I've been doing it the same way for forty years. I recently watched a fifty minute YouTube video with a guy named Tom Weber who is Eddie Van Halen's guitar tech. And he showed how he changes guitar strings. Now, there's different kinds of guitars, and I own a couple of guitars that have what they call a locking tremolo system on them. It's what Eddie Van Halen has on his guitar. It makes it a lot more complicated because you've got the strings going the opposite way. You've got hex wrenches you've got to use. You've got locking. It's a little bit more complicated. And this guy showed how he does it when he's changing strings and he says he could go change 40 guitar strings in a day sometimes 40 guitars worth of strings so this these so and he talked about each one of the items that he used and how he did it i ended up buying all of it so <laughs> i'm shocked first thing shocked first thing he has is it's you use a it's a three millimeter right. hex wrench yep but this is a Allen long wrench. t-handle one because on the body, T-handle ones are key. On the yeah. body of the guitar, there are six hex screws that you have to undo on a locking tremolo guitar. And I always have the little Allen keys, and I'm always worried I'm going to scratch the paint on the guitar. Duh, this is so obvious. You, this one fits from outside the body of the guitar, and you can just do it. So I got these. These are Bondus is the brand name. It's the one he recommended. It came in a two-pack, so I have two of those. Then he recommended a four volt cordless drill with a special head that you can use as a string winder. And it's <laughs> it's USB rechargeable. It's it's a hammer head. It's only eighteen dollars on, on Amazon for the drill and I think ten dollars for the head. But if you look in there, that's you just fit the guitar tuner peg in there. No, some that drill comes with that head no i bought it's a magnetic head that i bought separately for like 10 bucks and the head is specifically for guitar it's just made keys. just for guitar for guitar tuners Tuning. Tuning. i mean this this drill came with a bunch of extra bits um like regular drill bits and it's only four volts so it's not heavy duty at all but it's not too it won't go too fast you're not going to like blast through the guitar string and destroy it but it's you know for changing strings it's it's awesome and then the last thing he recommended, which I have never seen before, is called a string stretcher. S T R E T C H A stretcher. Um, because when you put guitar strings on, you need to actually kind of yank on them and stretch them out a little bit before you lock everything down so they don't go out of tune. And it's always been a process. And he, I never even heard of this thing. He showed it. You just put it under the string and you slide it back and do forth. Like a lever thing. You don't even do that. You just slide it up and down the neck of the guitar three or four times, and that string is stretched out perfectly. You move to the next string, and you just go through them in rapid succession. Hmm. So 
These okay. are my new tools for changing guitar That's strings. I've done a few with them already, and it is literally like... Barry, you, you may need to shut off your uh, video if you're still hearing us, because he's frozen better. right okay. now. Um, yep. I was trying to bluff you guys it, always but anyways. Say, like, everybody that yeah. does um, tools always says... Todd, tool okay. Job, Why don't you go, just, like, and we'll catch up with Barry changed. in progress. Yes. <laughs> so, what are you doing? You're doing so what's in the box? what's in the box. Tom Weber. Okay. So, a few times before, I've mentioned that one of the things that... Troy does periodically is he will buy collections of things and resell them. And um, this was an item that he had that he bought from a collection of statues. This is an Iron Man statue, um, as we originally saw Iron Man. Um, and mm -hmm. in, in the comics, Tales of Suspense, number something exactly. around 79. Yep. And was it 79? From this, this was from the year 2000. And, oh, wow, look at and that. I've always liked this thing. I just, I love the cool, very retro look to it. And it's, it's pretty much right off the cover. And this is the golden version. And, um, yeah. in fact, he even has Barry's T wrench on the ground there. He's standing. Oh, there you up. go. You could do guitars. You could do guitars also, but it's, it's pretty cool. I've seen this before with the antenna broken and not bought it. Cause it's got a very fragile antenna on it. And um, but yeah, so he sits on top of my display of Iron Man Hot Toys figures. So, um, anyways, just a kind of a kind of a cool thing that that uh, Troy had, and and I, this is I think the third, the third, yeah, the third random statue that I missed years ago that I bought from one of his collection buys. So, very cool. So, cool. Dave, what do you got? All right, mine is sort of a what's in the box combination uh, workbench. So we mentioned last week, and I'll again all of this stuff. We're going to throw it up on our Instagram. So check out if you listen to this on Friday, stuff will be on our Instagram. If you listen to this after Friday, check out uh, our Instagram, which is I don't know. I'll let you know in a second because I have to look at it. Um, so I, I got I won or bought the chicken skewers from Temple of Doom that I talked about last week, and I'm building a display for them. Um, and uh, we're going back and forth on what to do. You know, they're fairly dark, so I was going to put them on a black background. So this is a long sort of wooden display. So I decided that um, to give the idea of sort of flame and also the indiana jones logo which is sort of this gradient from basically yes. yep. white to yellow to orange or some combination of that so i actually went in photoshop and, and made a, a gradient um thing because this display is 36 inches long by six inches high um and it made it made a gradient and then i'm like how do i get this printed um i did a test on just some paper at staples but i want something so i found on vista print that they have all kinds of different um, vinyl decals and stuff. So to th get something long enough, it's actually a floor decal. Floor decals are big now because of the pandemic. They're like, hey, six feet, stay six feet apart. Or they use them a lot at trade shows where it's like, you know, whatever. Uh, Burger King uh, sponsored, by, you know, and they have a big set. So I was able to get on Vistaprint a 24 by 36 inch heavy vinyl sticker basically i actually since i only needed a narrow piece i printed it three times so i in case they mess up so um i haven't i just got it today it came out great it was only like 50 bucks um so and it has some nice texture to it so it'll look good as the background so if you're looking for like a big sort of background for something or you know a display it's a good way to go they have smaller ones too so i would totally use that again if i wanted to put something in the background and didn't want just like a photocopy or you know a print so this vinyl sticky thing um that doesn't make sense you'll see pictures of it um but uh so that was that was something i'm working on. i should have the display finished this week that's so awesome i'll, I'll I'll show pictures of it next week, but look on our Instagram for pictures of everything uh, we talked about. Um, where now you notice I'm talking because Barry's Barry's internet we, we've lost he Barry. fell off our, our Zoom. He's still recording, um, but Todd, anything else? Any last thoughts? I have no last thoughts at this point, other than I hope Barry is okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's okay. He just had internet problems. Yeah. No, no, it's, um, yeah, 
No, it's, it's... Yeah, so, good. Yeah, so next week, I don't know what we're going to talk about. What are we talking about? Maybe Titans, because we haven't talked about Titans. Titans, Titans. I think Titans. we should get caught up on what it, what's if. But uh, what if, because I, I've yeah. been watching it and enjoying it. You guys have la- are lagging behind, but I think you, you need to catch up. There's some, some, yeah, we'll some interesting stuff there. Both, both of those things. I'm just going to text Barry and see where he is because we're going to tell him we're wrapping up. Uh, you can hear this live on the air. Hey, oh, wait, he's coming back. He's coming back just in time to wrap up the show. So, and he's back. And thanks for listening. <laughs> Barry, any last uh, thoughts? Barry. You, yeah, I'll give you a last, last thought. It's, it's unfortunate yeah. when your wife forgets that unplugging to reboot the router is going to knock her husband off a podcast. So, Okay. She rebooted okay. the router because she wow. was having internet problems. And she's like, oh, did that affect you? I'm like, mm, yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. On the internet doing a podcast. Sounds like there's a little <laughs> passive aggressive messagery going on there, Barry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you but, know, um, hey, it happens. What are you going to do? But I'm back. Happen. I'm sorry. That was what, but like you, we're still recording. You're yeah, recording. I'm still recording. It's uh, all... We did mention it. But anyway, um, we're pretty much wrapped up. So, did you, Barry, did, I, did you guys get to the end of me talking? Did you get the end we of got the everything about after my... I everything we got everything up until I have guitar strings something about <laughs> yeah, guitar strings. Yeah, like yeah, okay, yeah. good. We did no, get we everything. Got everything. <laughs> you were at the stretcher. Right, was there anything after the stretcher? Nope, just me okay, dabbling. Yeah. So you're all good. You're all good. Um, all right, so check all those pictures out on Instagram. Um, tell us what you're watching for the fall TV. If there's anything good, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Uh,